Hi there, it's Mark from Lightmap. I'm just going to show you a bit of a lighting demo on this model uh, from the render competition. So we've got it loaded into Cinema 4D and Redshift and uh, I've set up a camera. So let's just change the camera. Okay, and I've loaded a backplate image for this. So I'll just check my render settings. Take that down to 1200. Okay, and let's just do a little uh, test render. Let's open up the render view. And basically that's the background image and there's absolutely no lighting at the moment. So we're going to light this all in HDR Light Studio now. So let's close that window. We've got the HDR Light Studio connection loaded, uh, set to Redshift. We create a new project. The environment light is created for Redshift and we press start and then we will connect to that and start to uh, light the shot. Okay, if I press play, the rendering has started in Cinema 4D and is now streaming across uh, to HDR Light Studio. And we've got this background uh, default gradient and that's why we can see the car now and it's not black. But what I'm going to do is actually get rid of that, go to our preset library and go to the environments. Now what I'm going to look for is a, a pre-existing environment with some kind of uh, ground, you know, browny coloured ground uh, and sky with a bit of clouds in it. So if we just have a look through these and just see if we can find something that gives a similar vibe. We don't want something with a bright sun because it's kind of this sunset. So we'll just keep scrolling down. So we find something there's loads of stuff in here here's one so we'll, we'll use this so I could drag and drop this onto the shot onto the light list it doesn't really matter okay and now we've got some initial lighting for this scene so I'm going to brighten it so I'm going to press the plus button on the brightness and that will essentially double the brightness and you can see we've gone too bright. So let's let's halve it again by pressing minus, take it down a stop, and let's just manually use the slider. Okay, so actually what I want to do is the orientation of this map, we've got quite a bright reflection here, and this seems to be the area where the sun is setting. So if I uh, make a new light and use uh, the rim mode for positioning it and click on here that actually is the bright part of the HDRI map that is behind the car um, so if I take the map and I now rotate that I'm just going to put this cloudy area of the map behind the car. So I was just using this light placed as a guide using rim mode which put the light behind so I could get rid of that light now. Okay so I think the ground uh, in terms of uh, the colour of the ground I think that's uh, not a terrible match, not a bad match, but that's fine. Um, what we'll do is we'll darken off just the bottom um, so we don't have this kind of these these bright bits at the bottom of the wheels from the ground because there's some self shadowing so if I create a gradient background put it over the top and then if we change the blend mode to multiply and then we come to the appearance of the ramp and we open that and we reverse it we've now got the dark bit at the bottom of the map and we just uh, can adjust this so we could just decide where the map starts to darken off. And if you look at the bottom of these wheels, if I turn this light off, 
you can see everything brighten up and then if I just turn that back on this is looking more natural uh, because we've got some shadowing and darker areas under the car so it would make sense that the bottom part of the map would be a bit darker okay so what's next well I think the clouds that are reflecting in here they're looking a bit too uh, white and we want to get some of the warmth from the sunset so if we just get a light and place it over there and then we'll uh, scale that up I'm going to uh, use um, uh, shift and R for non-proportional scale and we'll scale that light up over that area And then we're going to change the blend mode on that to color. And then we'll change the appearance of this soft light. And we'll bring up the Kelvin. And we can actually start to warm up that reflection by bringing in this orangey color. Okay, so if I turn that off. We've got the very white reflections. If I turn it on, we've warmed up those reflections. And if I change the brightness of that, that will change how much it is colouring um, underneath on those clouds. And then I will actually scale up that light to be a little bit bigger as well. Okay, so this area of the car is is looking like really boring so let's do something to bring this alive a bit i think we want to kind of boost the brightness of the floor to reflect in this area so to do this we'll just create another soft round light click on there and then we want to position this by its reflection and then if i click on the side of the car that is now reflecting uh, in the side here. So if I click towards the bottom, and then that's going to, uh, we'll position it by the middle of the light, and, that, and that's graduating out. So if I make that light, if I just press R for proportional scale, and just let that scale up a bit, that's great. Now, we'll change the blend mode to amplify and this will make this light act like a torch shining onto the ground and boosting its brightness so rather than just a pure white light we get the details coming from the floor so we are just bringing bringing this alive a bit by boosting the brightness here okay so there is a really nice line, a body line, a detail down the side of the car here, uh, coming into this kind of crease line here. And I think it'd be really nice to highlight this feature of the car. So to do this, I'm going to place some lights to give me a guide, when, and then I'll actually place the final light to get it where I want to, because sometimes it's quite hard to place a light that's going to get the right effect all the way along. So I'll make one light and I'm going to change its size to something like 4x4, four four, quite small. And then I'm going to change its colour to get rid of that to green. So it's quite noticeable. Make it quite bright. And then I'm going to click here. In reflection mode to move that light there to reflect there and then press ctrl D to duplicate the light and we'll put one back here and ctrl D again and we'll click in the middle here and this just gives us a feel of the points that the light would need to pass through to create an effect down the side of the car so I'm going to go to the light presets now and get a light that's graduating from the bottom upwards. Uh, this is a, a scrim light as well. And then 
I'm actually going to drag and drop that straight onto the canvas. Now, the handle for the light currently is in the middle. If I go to the light preview, I can just drag that handle down to the bottom edge. And then if I go back to the canvas, and I'll go to change to move mode, W, and we need to rotate this light. And what I will do is I'm going to drag the light in the light list underneath those guide lights so that we can see what's going on. And now I'm going to brighten this light a bit and just start to rotate and move the light. non-proportional scale, make it a bit wider. And then let's just keep moving it down. Looking here, I just want to fill in this whole top section with this light. Without it coming down onto this surface. So I think a slight bit of rotation needed. That's great. So we can delete these lights now. You'll see that we didn't exactly pass through those and we actually went further down on the map. But it was good to get those initial positions just to see what was going on. So I'm going to delete those now. And then we've got this, we're going to brighten up this light that is picking up on that detail across there. So if I turn that off, we lose a lot of the information about the design of the car, this lovely line. Turn that back on. And that looks great. And we can adjust this scrim light, because this light type is a scrim light. And I can soften that effect by moving the light further away. Or I can tighten up the graduation. So I actually think that looks pretty good. Now the only thing is, at the front here on the car, We've got the light hitting that part there, and really, I don't want that. So let's just have a look at what's creating that. So if I click on make a new light, make it green again to make it easy to see, and click here. Okay, we can see that it's this section here of the light. So let's just see what we can do to stop that reflecting in that part there. Move the light about. That's nice. We can get rid of that. There we go. So we've still got this line followed down there. I kind of like it tailing off and then this reflection of the clouds coming in there. So that looks really good. OK, so we've got the red lights on the back of the car. And let's imagine those red lights were reflecting on something and we want to create a bit of warmth uh, and red reflection here. So let's make another soft light and change its colour to red and then say click on this number plate okay 
isn't quite the right, it's a bit too pink. Okay, and then we'll turn down the brightness of that. But I do like how it's bringing a bit of the warmth of, of the lights, the redness into the back there and keying it in. That's really nice. Now the final thing is I'm not getting a lot of detail around the tyres. So let's create one bright light that's quite small that will create a highlight on the tyres. So again, I'll use a soft round light. We'll change its size to say 8 by 8. And then we're going to make it quite bright. And if I turn that off, just double checking. Right, let's click on this position on the wheel here. Try again in another location. There we go. So we've actually got quite a nice little highlight here. And let's isolate the light, let's solo it. And you can see just the effect of that light. So I'm going to boost the brightness a bit. There we go. Unsolo. Okay, so there we have it. We've gone from absolutely no lighting at all to creating some nice dynamic lighting to show off this car and I'll now show you the final render using this lighting. So thanks for watching this video. If you've got a license of HDR Light Studio and you're entering this competition, uh, I hope you found a bit of inspiration uh, in this demonstration. Thank you for watching.